Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your servants, the leaders in the church, as well as workers. Thank you for what you are going to do in every life. Reveal your mind to everyone in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you transform every heart, every life, so that your work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout, Amen. We're coming to Esther chapter 2. In Esther chapter 2, I read verse 7. And he brought up Adassa, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Verse 10. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show them. Verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women and obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Verse 20. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. I've read those verses to you for you to understand who Esther was, what Esther became, and what was the underlining factor in her life to make her who she became. And we do that so that we would know ourselves what to do, how to do it, so that we can become whom the Lord has ordained we will become. I will become whom the Lord has ordained that I will become. Without a knowing, the biblical Esther was destined for the throne. But she didn't know. She was an orphan. But then her mentor minister took her up to bring her up. All the time, Mordecai was teaching, training her. She didn't know that this was what she was being trained for. But even though she didn't know, she responded to the good, godly upbringing. And the divine hand molded her life for destiny. The hand of the Lord will mold you for his own destiny. Unknown to her, she came under Mordecai for a purpose. Unknown to her, she came under training for a purpose. Unknown to her, she came under a disciplined life for a purpose. She became crowned eventually. And she came to the kingdom for such a time as this. Each day of teaching, each day of challenge, and each day of training moved her towards God's appointed day of on the throne. 
That's why we need to pray, Lord, teach me. Lord, train me. Lord, tame me. Lord, task me. Lord, test me. Lord, try me. Lord, thresh me. Lord, transform me for the destined throne. He will do it. But to see all that process in the teaching, in the training, in the taming, many things that need to be tamed in our lives, our tongue, our thoughts, our desires, our ambition, our plans, aspirations, they'll go off the line and away from God's destined position. If he does not tame us, he will tame you. And the things that have the tendency to go wild and to go in a direction, in a tangent, the Lord will bring you to the right place in Jesus' name. And then he will test and he will try the testings and the trials that come to the people of God, they are not meant to destroy. They are meant to prepare us for the place he has ordained for us. He has threshed us like wheat so that the chaff in our lives will be totally taken away. And then he will transform us and make us feed for the throne he has destined for us. Tonight we're looking at the message, our preparation and readiness for the throne. Our preparation and readiness for the throne. As we look at how Esther got ready and Esther got prepared for the throne and for the appointment that was divine. For what the Lord has raised her up. Then we learn from all those things that happened to her. All those things that brought her up. All those things that transformed her. So that we, by the grace of God, in the same way she responded to the teaching and the training. And to the molding, transforming hands of the Lord. In that same way, you and I will respond in Jesus' name. You will not allow a moment to pass. You will not allow a day to pass. That you will not submit. You will not surrender. You will not yield to the training, molding hand of the Lord. He will not fail on his own side. And I pray you will not fail on your own side in Jesus' name. Everything he has ordained that you will be in life. Everything he has ordained you will do in life. Every place he has ordained that you will reach in life as he prepares you, as he trains you, as he molds you, as he corrects you, as it touches your life, as it transforms your life, you respond appropriately in Jesus' name. Our preparation and readiness for the throne. Three things we're looking at. Number one, personal diligence in discipleship for the throne. It's discipling us is turning our lives around, is changing us, and is remodeling our lives in discipleship for a goal, for a purpose, for the throne. Personal diligence in discipleship for the throne. Point number two, the present danger of drifting from the throne is possible 
that God ordains that this is what somebody will be. And yet, there's a possibility. And yet, there is the danger that the person can drift away from the past that leads to the throne. The possibility is there, and the process is there. There are people that go through the process of being drifted away from the ordained plan of God for them. And of course, when somebody drifts away like that, there is a penalty for drifting away. When somebody drifts away, is not able to get to the final destination. For thank God, it will prevent your drifting away. It will prevent my drifting away. And we will not drift away from the past that leads to the throne ordained for us in Jesus' name. Point number two, the present danger of drifting from the throne. Point number three, the purposeful devotion towards our destiny on the throne. The purposeful devotion towards our destiny on the throne. Point number one. Tell me number one there. The rain and the climate has taken your voice away. Personal diligence in discipleship for the throne. Esther chapter 2 verse 20. Esther chapter 2 verse 20. Esther had not yet showed her kindred, nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. Great secret of how to get to the throne. Great revelation on how to move from where you are to what the Lord has ordained for you. It says, Esther did the commandment of Mordecai from the time she got under the tutelage of Mordecai, under the teaching of Mordecai, under the training of Mordecai. There was one word she never lost, and it is the word obedience. Obedience to God, yes, but how would she know what God wanted except the mentor, the master, the minister, Mordecai, revealed to her. And so she knew that God raised up Mordecai for her so that she will hear all she needed to hear. And she was very diligent to carry out and to obey the commandments of Mordecai. And she didn't do that only when she was younger. She did that when she was young. As she was growing up, she manifested that same characteristic of obedience. And then the opportunity came now that she will become a queen. And yet she still looked up to Mordecai. And then eventually she was a crowned queen in verse 17. And after that verse 17, being crowned as king, she still continued in obedience to Mordecai, a mentor, a minister, and the one that mended her life from a younger age. It says, like as, like as when she was brought up with him, fulfilling God's appointed destiny demands diligence that a person will know, I'm not here for naught. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a goal. I'm here to fulfill destiny. And therefore, there'll be diligence. There'll be determination. The flesh will try to fight back. The flesh will try to pull you down. The flesh will try to derail you. 
you will not be derailed. But there was determination. There was decision. She decided, she made up her mind. I'm here in this one single life. I don't know what I'm going to become. I don't know what is going to happen. But I decide that the man that knows better the way of life, Mordecai, instructing me, enlightening me, and illuminating me, and making me to understand what I didn't know. I make up my mind. This is decision. Whatever he says, whatever he teaches, I'm going to follow. Dedication. She dedicated herself to this way of life. Of course, there were other peers, other girls like her, other daughters like her, other women like her, and they went their own way. They did whatever they wanted, but she had this singular dedication that this is what I'm going to be, devotion. It's almost like this is life. And this is the reason to live. And I devote myself to this principle of life, practice of life, and to this path that I ought to take. She had delight. Delight. She never kind of belittled Mordecai. You are not my father. I bought your own children. Where are your children? What do you have? Why are you putting all this pressure on me? And uh, why is it I'm just like an adopted uh, girl or daughter? Never. She delighted in the teaching that Mordecai was giving to her. And because of that, that's the reason. Eventually, she became what she became. And she delighted in obedience, loving the commandments, and living by the commandment that is the pathway to the throne. Obedience to Mordecai, obeying him as a minister, is the evidence, number one, of a transformed heart. It's a matter of the heart. If the heart is not transformed, a person will not be diligent in obeying, obeying, obeying all the time. Number one, she had a transformed heart. Number two, a tender heart. You cannot mold a stony heart, a hardened heart, but a tender heart as she was receiving the word and the teaching from Mordecai transformed tender heart a teachable heart she had a teachable heart it wasn't like say what you are going to say our teachers in school told us we must be girls and ladies of our own mind and we must not just be following sheepishly a man, an old man of the old school that does not know what is taking place today. She had a teachable heart. She had a thoughtful heart. Look at this man concentrating on me. And yet Mordecai did not do anything defiling anything that will pollute her mind and she was very thoughtful in her heart this pure man and this righteous man and this purposeful man leading me like this and never doing anything i hear some of the older men are doing what the younger ladies she was thoughtful a thoughtful heart a thankful heart what would I have become? No father, no mother, no siblings, no brother, no sister, nobody in my family. And we are here in a strange land. And God has raised up somebody called Mordecai. Lord, I'm grateful. And I'm going to show my thankfulness by obeying. She had a thankful heart. 
she had a trusting heart trusting heart those days they didn't have the whole bible in their hands am i sure that this man is leading me the right way am i sure don't i don't go to this don't have that pleasure don't go into the flesh don't do this don't do that but she had a trusting heart i trust him i can even tell from the tone of his voice from the look on his face he is a man to be trusted then she had a triumphant heart and that's what moved her eventually to the throne i pray god will give you a good godly heart your heart will be transformed tender teachable thoughtful thankful trusting triumphant in jesus name let's look at ephesians chapter 6 reading from verse 1 ephesians chapter 6 reading from verse 1 it says children obey your parents in the lord for this is right that's what Esther followed. Obey your parents in the Lord. That is dead. Mommy is dead. Mordecai stands for a father, for a mother, for a teacher, for a trainer, and for a mentor. And to obey. And that's what she did. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father. How do we do that? With obedience. And your mother, how do we do that with obedience? Which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee. And thou, that thou mayest live long on the earth. As you obey your father, your mother, in the Lord, you will live long. Look at Romans chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, is servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. Esther, of course, knew other people. And those other people will be craving for her attention. A beautiful girl, a charming girl, a presentable girl. But she never looked in their direction. And she didn't allow beauty to make her pompous and proud and disobedient. There are people, maybe they have some beauty. Maybe they have some good qualities. They allow those good, good qualities to lead them astray. And there's no obedience in their lives. You will not be like that. But God said in verse 17 that she was the servants of sin. Pastors, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. You have obeyed that form of doctrine. Your teacher in the way of righteousness is your Mordecai. And the one who is training you to get to the place God wants you to get to in life, that's your Mordecai. And the one that reveals the mind of God, the doctrines of the word of God unto you, that's your Mordecai. And as you listen to that word and obey that word, the Lord will move you forward. Look at Romans chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. That's what Esther did. All the people that were led her astray and teach her wrong attitude. You see, when people are growing up, teenagers in particular, they have the tendency of leave me alone. I know enough. I want to be independent. 
I don't want anybody gagging me and goading me and say, do this, don't do that. I know enough now. And really, when they say that, they say that to their minister. They say that to their father. They say that to their mother. And yet, they listen to other people outside, leading them astray. But Esther will not do that. I will not do that. I said, I will not do that. You will not do that in Jesus' name. For they that are sought, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is calm abroad, unto all men your obedience has come abroad unto all men and that's what happened to that young lady esther obeying the word repent she obeyed return she obeyed look up to god she obeyed pray unto god she obeyed Live a life that God can use in the future. She obeyed. Live a life that when it comes in the future, you are to be appointed for something good. There will be no blemish record in the past that she did this, she did this, she did that, and she obeyed. It says, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. If somebody has the grace of God, that's the evidence. Obedient in all things. There is no part of the teaching of the word of God that is redundant, that is unnecessary, that is non-essential. Everything is important. And because of that, Paul the apostle said, I wrote to you and I instructed you and I gave you what you ought to do. And I wanted to be sure you were obedient in all things chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 15 chapter 7 of second corinthians verse 15 and his inward affection is more abundant toward you whilst he remembered the obedience of you all he remembered the obedience of you all and it shouldn't be an exception. Anyone and everyone that wants to be promoted by God here on earth, and when we get to glory in heaven, in the minutest of details, and in the multitude of the declarations and the doctrines of the word of God, that you all are obedient, will be obedient in Jesus' name. It says, whilst he remembered the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling ye received him. Chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians, verse 6. And having in a readiness having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What does that mean? To revenge all disobedience. You think about your life. How is it that I, that I ever disobeyed my Mordecai, my minister, my mentor, my leader, my pastor and the one directing me in the way of righteousness what was i thinking about what came upon me that i ever disobeyed 
now it's the devil that made me do that. I'm going to revenge on the devil now. And I'm going to have obedience that will almost compensate for the disobedience of the past. Look at that verse 6 again. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when the obedience is fulfilled. I will obey the word of God. I'm not hearing my people today. I will obey my pastor. You have to say that one before I go and I will obey my pastor. You will in Jesus name. In Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He said, you've obeyed in my presence now. In my absence, you'll obey even more. Work out your own salvation or trembling or fear and trembling. First, Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 14. In verse 14, and if any man obey not our word, guess Paul the Apostle, writing to the Thessalonians, and he's saying, I'm writing to you by inspiration. I'm preaching to you by inspiration. I'm teaching you, I'm training you, and revealing the mind of God unto you. If it so happens that any man will not obey, our word by this epistle note that man mark out that man don't befriend him don't encourage him don't be friendly don't say fellowship is available don't say we congratulate you for being disobedient we honor you for being disobedient don't laugh with them don't rejoice with them don't tell them, hey, do that again, you're doing well. It says, if any man, whatever his position in the Thessalonian church, whatever his responsibility in the Thessalonian church, if any man obey not a word by this epistle, note that man, have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Give me a good amen. Look at Titus, chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. Titus, chapter 2, verse 9. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well. Tell me what follows there. In all things. And it says, not answering again not debating not disputing not fighting back not rejecting instruction it says servants should obey their masters in all things that's why it's master that's why you are servant and if you're a child of god and you are serving in the church you are a servant to God, but you are a servant assisting the pastor, the minister, the Mordecai that is training you. And you are to abide by that word and obey that word in all things. Somebody shout in all things. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Obey the preachers. Obey the teachers. Obey the trainers. Obey your Mordecai that has the rule over you. 
and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls. Did you see when we read during the teaching of the Sunday scripture that Mordecai was going up and down and he was watching to see what will happen to Esther. He was watching for her interest, watching for her selection, watching for her being chosen. And the same thing the minister is watching over your soul as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. You receive profit in the word of God in Jesus' name. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, or reading from verse 11, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 11, and that she study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you as we commanded you you remember what we read in verse 20 of esther chapter 2 for esther did the commandment of mordecai as when she was brought up with him and here is the word of god telling us to be like that esther we ought to be and do the commandments of god as children church workers, as youths and youth leaders, as members of the church, as fathers and mothers in the church, verse 12, that she may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that she may have lack of nothing. You will not lack. First Peter chapter 4 I read from verse 17 and verse 18 first Peter chapter 4 verse 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it falls begin at us what shall the end be of them that will be not the gospel of God. What shall the envy of them that have a Mordecai, of them that have a minister, of them that have a teacher, of them that have a trainer, and yet they will not obey the gospel they are hearing? The end will be terrible. That will not be your end. I say that will not be your end. You'll be an obedient child in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy amen amen for yourself amen for the word of god amen for a new life of obedience it will happen in jesus name Point number two, the present danger of drifting from the throne. I'm sure you've heard of many people, learned of many people. This is what they could have become. The promotion that could have come to them. The prosperity that could have come to them. The honor that could have come to them. But it's a present danger all over the world and it is spreading and the social media makes it to spread that it is like disobedience is being taught as a subject 
is being taught as a pattern of life. Disobedience to parents, disobedience to pastors, disobedience to constituted authority is being taught as if this is the way what he therein. And because of that, many people are missing out in life. And they're not able to reach the place the Lord has ordained for them. You will reach your own appointed place. I will reach my own appointed place. Now I was saying it for myself. I will reach my own appointed place. You will reach in Jesus' name. Nothing coming from the world. Nothing you know, coming from the people that teach disobedience as a way of life, as a pattern of life. Nothing that comes from unteachable people will affect you, will derail you in Jesus' name. You will not drift. You will not go astray. This path of righteousness that the Lord has ordained that you will walk in so that in this life it will promote you. And in the life to come, it will promote you. Nothing will derail you in Jesus' name. There are those who forget their destination. And those who forget their destination are easily distracted and easily disengaged. They drift from the path that leads to the throne. Now, what are the things that make people drift? Number one, disobedience. Disobedience. Look at first Samuel chapter 15. And we're reading from verse 10. First Samuel chapter 15. Reading from verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried, unto the Lord all night. Verse 19. In verse 19, Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. That's how you know those who are incorrigible. That's how you know those who are not going to take correction. Why have you disobeyed the word of the Lord? Who oh, said, what do you mean? I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Then it goes on to say, and I've gone the way which the Lord sent me. And I brought Agag, the king of Amalek. And I've utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things, which should have been utterly destroyed. Now he's telling the truth. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal is going to cover up. I'm going to give excuse. There are people that always have explanation for their disobedience. Excuse for their disobedience. They always have a reason to give for their disobedience. In small things, in great things, until disobedience becomes a habit for them. Those people will lose out in life. I pray it will not be you. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice.
and to her king and the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness, headiness, hard heartedness, stubbornness, stone heart. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being a king. He lost the throne. He was a drifter. He drifted away from the throne by disobedience. Number two, double-mindedness. Should I repent? Shouldn't I repent? Should I change? Or should I leave that thing I'm doing? Or should I still go on? They're not decided. Esther never had a moment of double-mindedness. She knew this man is directing me in the way of the Lord, in the good, godly, glorious way. And because this is the good way, and this is the godly way, and this is the godly way. I am not going to depart. She didn't have double-mindedness. But you know, the people that have double-mindedness, they never decide, I'm going to do right. I'm going to show that I accept, I abide by the training. Look at Hosea chapter 10. Reading from verse 2. Hosea chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 2. It says in verse 2, Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. Their heart is divided. Is righteousness the only way? Is holiness the only way to see the Lord? Or is there an alternative that's why they're reading that book and reading that book and they're searching. Maybe there's an alternative to holiness. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. Double-mindedness. Look at James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways when you hear the pure teaching of the word of god that you should take to god in prayer and concentrate on that and say i know this is the way there's no other way if you have a double mind am i not saved and saved forever whatever i do does it count is in god a loving god Yes, he is, but it's the Holy God too. And he's of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. But when somebody is double-minded, he doesn't stay on the doctrine, on the teaching of the Word of God. And he derails and drifts away from the throne. Number three, desires. Distracting desires. Desires, look at Mark chapter 4, reading from verse 19. Mark chapter 4, reading from verse 19. In verse 19, the Lord said, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts for other things, desires for other things, entering in, choke the world and becometh unfruitful. Becometh unfruitful. When you hear the pure teaching of the word of God, and immediately after, there is a polluted message in one DVD somewhere. There is a contradictory message on the side of a particular preacher and then you've had something pure and immediately you go back home, you go on that side 
and that fellow will excite you, make you laugh, and make fun of holiness and righteousness and obedience and being dutiful and say, Yes, this is what they are talking about. Look at this man, it's interesting. And he jokes a lot and he talks a lot. Everything you heard before will be raised from your heart. You will not bring anything to a perfect fruit. Distracting desires. Number four, declension. Declension. That he is on this height. And then you're looking at yourself. But why am I the only one that is strict? I'm the only one that is well disciplined. I'm the only one among these other believers that is following the narrow path that few only find. And then you want to come down. I will not come down. Are you there? I said, I will not come down. You will not come down in Jesus' name. Declension. Hosea chapter 4. I read from verse 16. Hosea chapter 4. Verse 16, for Israel slides back as, an, as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. I pray the Lord will not leave you alone. Mordecai will not leave you alone. Your pastor will not leave you alone. But you must cooperate and be like Esther. I hear, I take heed, I obey, I pray, I move on, I look away from distractors. Look at Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. Hosea chapter 8, declension. The people who go back from what they are learning, this is what happens. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my Lord, but they were counted as a strange thing. That's why they decline. That's why they decrease. That's why they backslide. That's why they stop holding firm. Declension. Number five, defiance. Defiance. I don't care for anybody. I don't respect anybody. He says his pastor. I don't care for pastor. He says his Mordecai. You have your life to live. I have my life to live. Leave me alone. Defiance. The people who are defiant, they will never get to the place or danger for them. And if you love yourself, you come down from that arrogance. And from that level of defiance, and you say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm going to be obedient to the word of God. Promotion will come. I said promotion will come. In Psalm 12, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 12, verse 1. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. You won't say amen to that one. And the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, with our tongue we will prevail, our leaves are our own, who is Lord over us, that's defiance, such people don't get to their appointed destination, you will get your appointed destination, number six, defilement, Defilement. Aren't you glad that in those days of promiscuity, in those days 
of defilement everywhere. Esther remained a virgin. Our daughters go to school today, and before they come back, some of them already pregnant. Our daughters in the church, and your own daughters, some of them are already defiled because they are not listening to what the father, the mother is saying at home every time they have devotion and every time they have their youth the meeting, they're not listening and every time they are brought to church, they're not listening and so you find even before they come out of school or after they come out of school, they're already defiled. I pray things will change in every family. Look at Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Esther remains a virgin spiritually, morally, physically. Will remain virgins in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 7, verse 15. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things which defile the man. Verse 20. In verse 20, and he said, That which cometh out of the man defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. And you know, pornography generates evil thoughts. Those bad, bad pictures, portraits in social media, in those advertisements, they generate evil thoughts. And evil thoughts defile adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God tell me, tell me, say that again, destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? You send your daughter to go for extra studies after school with brother so and so. He's a teacher. I heard as a good teacher. He teaches difficult subjects in such a simple way that young people who can't. And as you send your daughter there, and the man has a deeper life, holier life, spiritual life, man. And then your daughter goes there, innocent of defilement. And as they teach English, mathematics, science, whatever, it begins to fumble with your daughter. And the careless daughter doesn't report anything at home. The mathematics is greater than the spiritual life. Eventually, that man defiles your daughter. Or maybe we say that there's a youth group. And those youth teachers, thank God, they're teaching our children. Teaching them the way of holiness and the way of life. 
and any familiarity between the boys and the girls, even before the youth leaders and those youths. And eventually, there is defilement. The leader who is supposed to bring them up in the way of the Lord is defiling them. Hear this. Those teachers, God will destroy them. You need to say good amen. amen. Those leaders in church, I mean leader, and secretly they are defiling ladies, women, they even commit adultery. But married women, God will deal with them. Amen. Look at that verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Number seven, dullness. Why people derail, why people drift away from the path that leads to the throne, dullness. In Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 15, Matthew 13, 15, for these people, people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, their ears are dull of hearing, they are tired of hearing, they are dull, they are disinterested. All they want is finish quickly and let us go home. When you get back home, what do you do? Nothing. But they are in a hurry to leave the house of God and rush back home. Why? They are dull of hearing and their ears, they are closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. Hebrews chapter 5 we're reading from verse 11. It says in verse 11 of whom we have many things to say for you to get to the throne, we have many things to say. For you to arrive at your destination, we have many things to say. And hard to be uttered, seen, ye are dull of hearing. Dullness makes people to go astray that they cannot have the destined position the Lord adds for them. Number eight, discord. Discord. Proverbs chapter 6. We're reading from verse 14. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 14. It tells us in verse 14, Proverbs chapter 6, for whatness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He sows discord. In the family of God, he sows discord. He's telling the wife something, lie, deception, about the husband to sow discord in that family. Telling the husband something, a lie, deception, out of the pit of hell, Telling the husband something about the wife to knock their heads together. Telling the members something about the minister to knock their heads together. Telling the minister something before the minister goes to preach. Sir, I need to give you urgent information. And then he lets out that information and it's kind of a mixture of truth and lie. 
mixture of fact and deception and the pastor's preacher's heart is polluted because of the formation he has had just before going to the pulpit and now because of that discord the man cannot remain under the unrestricted or restrained influence of the Holy Ghost God deliver us I said God deliver us verse 15 therefore shall his calamity come suddenly the one so in this court suddenly shall he be broken without remedy these six things does the Lord hate yea seven an abomination unto him what abomination to the Lord number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four and heart that devises wicked imaginations number five feet that be sweet a running to mischief number six a false witness that speaketh lies number seven tell me one two three go he that sows discord among the brethren you see such people they don't get to the throne appointed by god and to get to heaven if they die in that condition impossible number nine desertion desertion that is they have something god has committed into their hands but they desert Look at chapter 34 of Job. Job chapter 34. I read from verse 26. Job 34. Verse 26. It striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others. Because, this is why it struck them, because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways deception those who desert who leave who run away from what god has appointed them to do the fear of man will not allow them to do what they ought to do the fear of man will not derail you in jesus name I wanted a good name. Yeah. Psalm 78. We're reading from verse 9. Psalm 78, verse 9. The children of Ephraim, being armed, trained, prepared, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. That's why. They are not able to reach that goal. I will reach my goal. Number 10, drawing back. Drawing back. Hebrews chapter 10. Reading from verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10. Reading from verse 38. Now the jaws shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if any man draw back, Anybody planning to draw back there? Where are you? Somebody going to draw back? The way is too rough, you want to draw back? The hill is too high, you want to draw back? The world is too difficult, you want to draw back? I will not draw back. Now the joy shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. What I wanted to give him, I cannot give him. I don't have pleasure in him anymore. The throne I wanted him to occupy, he cannot occupy again. I don't have pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. I will not draw back. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the souls. Amen. 
Number 11, deniers. Deniers. Those who deny the Lord. When trial comes, when challenges come, when people don't listen, and then you say, there's no point talking, there's no point preaching, they're not listening, and therefore you deny the word of God and you deny the Lord. You will not deny the Lord. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Second Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, tell me. Uh, somebody has been denying the Lord. He doesn't want to read the Bible. If we deny him, tell me. He will also deny us. Number 12. Deceptive doctrines. Deceptive doctrines. They make people derail. They make people drift. In Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Amen. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive deceptive doctrines and when people follow such doctrines they derailed and they drift away they drift from the throne in first timothy chapter 4 first timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 1 now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 9. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied with them. The things that derail, the things that make people drift from the throne. I pray God will take away from every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Disobedience, double-mindedness, distracting desires, declension, defiance, defilement, dullness, Discord, desertion, drawing back, denials, deceptive doctrines. The Lord cleanse every one of us from every one of them in Jesus' name. Point number three, the purposeful devotion towards our destiny on the throne. Purposeful devotion towards our destiny on the throne we're coming to esther chapter 2 reading from verse 17 esther chapter 2 reading from verse 17 and the king loved esther the king of kings will love you above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. He'll obtain grace and favor from the King of Kings in Jesus' name. More than all the virgins, you see that? She remained a virgin. 
and it says so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. I want you to underline that word, virgin, there. That's what God wants us to be spiritually. No defilement, no adultery, no fornication, no fleshly acts, nothing associating us with the world that will defile us. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11, we're reading from verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Nothing of the world, nothing of the flesh, Nothing of defilement, nothing of evil. I pray the Lord will preserve you clean, pure, holy, righteous, undefiled, unstained in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with women. You want to be in glory on that final day. You want to reign with Christ. These are they which are not defiled with women. Whether the women are your housemates or they're your neighbors or their sisters in the church, or their, you know, just helpers, not defiled with women, for they are virgins. God will keep us to be virgins spiritually in Jesus' name. No sin, no evil, no corruption, no secret deal, with any woman, I hope you'll not tell your husband, no, 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 I'm saying what they say, what has happened now is the devil, is Satan. The devil always carries the blame of people's indulgence, of people's carelessness. Is Satan, but you know, I hope you don't tell your husband. Why should you tell a woman not to tell her husband whatever she does? Well, because this one is bad. This one is evil. Hope you don't tell your dad about what has happened. I love to keep on teaching you. I love to keep on taking care of you. Take this wretched, miserable 1,000 naira. If that girl was a pure girl, Righteous girl, righteous daughter, teachable daughter, transformed daughter, just throw the 1,000 naira in their face. They'll not bribe you with money to defile you. Verse 4 These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. These are they, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no girl, for they are without fault before the throne of God. That's who you will be. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Somebody there will get ready. The Lord is coming, you'll be ready. Is looking for holiness, you'll be ready. 
is looking for righteousness, you'll be ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. The righteousness of the saints. Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 21. To him that overcometh, you will overcome. I said you will overcome. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father in his throne. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. We're reading from verse 28. Colossians 1, 28. Whom we preach, one in every man. Some preachers don't warn their congregation. Some preachers don't warn the people they preach to. But if we're going to prepare people to remain holy, righteous, pure, spiritual virgins, we need to warn them of the danger of drifting away. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man, tell me, perfect in Christ Jesus. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 11. Ephesians 4, reading from verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. You know why? Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. To make them saints and to make them perfected, he gave preachers, pastors, teachers to the church, not just to occupy time, for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God will use you to preserve righteousness and holiness in the church of the living God in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave themselves for it. Why? That she might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that she might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. God will use us to do that in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, we're reading from verse 6. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, the words of Jesus, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. If you are preaching to help people get to the throne, your preaching will stir them up to desire and to pray for righteousness you make them hungry make them thirsty for righteousness you'll not excuse defilement excuse sin you'll not turn the grace of God into lasciviousness blessed a day which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled righteousness will fill our church Holiness will fill our church. Verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. You lost your amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. For no peace with how many people? All men. And holiness everywhere. Holiness at home. I said holiness at home. Holiness in the office. Holiness in the church. Holiness in the secret. Holiness in the public. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. First John chapter 3 from verse 1. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now, somebody shout the word now. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Every and every man that has this hope in him, tell me, purifies himself even as he is pure. You will remain a virgin for the Lord. A wise virgin. A righteous virgin, a pure virgin, a cleansed virgin, and God preparing you for the throne, there will be no disappointment in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verse 1, They shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. You are the wise. They that were foolish took their lambs, and they took no oil with them. They had profession, they had testimony, they had Bible, they had denomination, they had church, they had Mordecai, they had minister, but... The heart that gets ready, they didn't have. But the wise took oil in their vessels of their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then... All the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, Seen not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went, ah, they knew where to get the oil, but they didn't get that oil. They were not ready. Now at the late hour, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in, was in to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, the foolish virgins, the unprepared virgins, the righteous virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. The final hour, the final time, when you shall reach their destination, I know you not. Here is the lesson, watch ye therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour 
wherein the Son of Man cometh. I pray you will not play your chance away in Jesus' name. You will not gamble your soul away in Jesus' name. At this time of readiness and preparation, I pray you'll take the privilege. You'll be ready when he comes in Jesus' name. We're going to rise up and spend some time in prayer. You're not in a hurry. You're not rushing for the boss. And you're not going anywhere now. You're saying, Lord, I will be ready. I must be ready. Our preparation and readiness for the throne. Open your mouth. Talk to the Lord. And the Lord make every one of us ready in Jesus' name.